Hello, and welcome to Hidden in Plain Sight. I'm Adam Parsons, and this is my colleague, Rachel Newman. We work for Oxford Archaeology North, and we're here in our hometown of Lancaster in Market Square. We're stood in front of the old town hall, which is the museum today, a place that's free to enter and contains fantastic exhibits from the city itself and the surrounding area. And um, we're gonna go off on a little tour now. We'll head up to Castle Hill, just around the side of the museum here. And Rachel's gonna tell us a little bit about the towns and some of the important sites and interesting things you can see here. So we're up here on Castle Hill now, um, but we've come round the back of the castle and the church to Vicarage Fields. So what's so significant about this place here then? Well, this is really where Lancaster began. We have some evidence of prehistoric activity uh, on the other side of the little valley that um, Lancaster's built on it, from the Neolithic period and the Bronze Age. But the first really formal settlement seems to have come with the Romans. And it was here on Castle Hill that the Romans built their first fort in the later first century AD, probably in the AD 70s. And you can see why. You can see the panoramic view across Morecambe Bay to the Lakeland Hills. The Loon is at the foot of this hill, so it's a strategic river crossing. Indeed, the Scale Ford, which is about where the railway bridge now crosses the Loon, was the lowest fording point on the river for many, many years. It was quite clearly an important staging point in the Roman conquest of Britain. There were up to three forts on this site. The first one, built in the later first century AD, was of turf and timber, and you can see the ramparts of it. That that's the northwest corner just behind us. It was later rebuilt in the early second century, but then that remained in, in occupation right through the Roman period until the early fourth century, when a completely different fort on a different alignment was built on this site. It's called the Weary Wall Fort because in the medieval period an upstanding piece of wall was named the Weary Wall. We know that that fort is late because it cuts through a big building that was built outside the traditional forts. We don't know what that building was for but it had its own bathhouse. So we've come off Vicarage Fields now to the very centre of the hill and we're in between the castle and the church here. Am I right in thinking this would sort of be in the middle of the Roman fort that we were at previously? Yes, that's, that's right. The first two Roman forts were playing card shaped and draped over the top of the hill. So we're very close to the centre of them as far as we can gather. And the church was founded either on the Principia, the headquarters building, or perhaps on the commanding officer's house, which is traditionally next door. But it's certainly in the most important range, which is interesting in that we know that the church was founded probably in the 7th or 8th century AD because there's stone sculpture still existing from the 8th, 9th century onwards. It was then refounded at the time of the Norman Conquest, just in probably 1093, 1094, uh, and was given to the Priory of Sais uh, near Le Mans. The church you can see today is relatively modern. It was rebuilt over the centuries of when it was a priory, and most of what you can see now is 14th and 15th century, apart from the tower, which is somewhat more modern. Castle Hill and finally we get to come and see the castle but you've brought me round to a blank wall. <laughs> Why on earth are we here? Well this is really rather significant because this is what's known as the hanging wall. Um, we're actually sitting on the site where in the 18th century they'd erect grandstands for important hangings and two to three thousand people would come to watch. And the reason why it's the hanging wall is that it was a very secure pit place to hang people. You can see down at the bottom there that there is a door which would lead straight out onto the, onto the scaffold and so people would not have to come into the open air or be brought through the streets in order to be hanged. Sounds very gruesome but that's how things were in those days. There'd be an audience of people sat Yeah, here cheering, eating, eating cheering. popcorn. So finally on Castle Hill we've come to a proper castle bit of a castle. <laughs> Looks more like one to me anyway. Yes, that's right. This is the famous John of Gaunt Gate, the entry to Lancaster Castle. It was built uh, not by John of Gaunt, however, but by his son, Henry IV. 
John had inherited the dukedom of Lancaster, one of the very first dukedoms in the, in the country, through marriage. And obviously he passed the title on to his son, who succeeded Richard II and became Henry IV. And the title of Duke of Lancaster has remained with the crown ever since. So indeed today, the Queen is still the Duke of Lancaster. Right. The castle itself um, was built by someone called Roger of Poitou in the later 11th century, probably around 1094. And at that stage, this was the frontier of England. Um, a lot of people don't know that Cumbria, most of Cumbria, didn't become part of England until the end of the 11th century, about 10 years after this was founded. So this really, like the Roman fort, guarded the frontier and obviously used the strategic importance of this hill for that purpose. It was always a prison and indeed until very, very recently it was uh, remained a prison. Uh, indeed it was one of the late, last castle prisons, if not the last castle prisons in um, Europe after Colditz closed. So you've brought us around the side of the castle to this grassy area just in front of these beautiful houses. Yes, this is actually the infilled moat of the castle, which was probably also on the south side of the Roman fort, and was turned into a park reasonably early on. Lancaster, as a, a, the medieval town, grew up in the valley below us and was probably quite a noisy and in places dirty place. So as wealth rose, people came up here to live in this rather nice surroundings which is why a lot of uh, very nice Georgian houses were built here. The wealth of Lancaster grew on the back of the West Indies trade, which developed in the later 17th and 18th centuries, where uh, people in Lancaster were importing things like cotton to a certain extent, but also particularly mahogany and teak, uh, which is one of the reasons, or the main reason, why the famous firm of Waring and Gillows was founded in Lancaster and existed here until very recently. Of course, as well as importing timber and, and cotton, this was also, at, at one stage, the third largest slaving port in Britain before it was overtaken by the likes of Bristol, Liverpool and Whitehaven. But uh, the wealth was translated into these very nice properties behind us. So you've brought us off the top of the hill and we're now outside the judge's lodgings. Of Church Street. This is one of the oldest houses in Lancaster and is known as Judges Lodgings because it's where the um, size judges lodged um, when they came to conduct trials in the castle. Uh, I brought you here because this is actually near the gate of the Roman fort, the east gate of the Roman fort, and Church Street, which was the main street in Lancaster for many, many hundreds of years, is actually the Roman road leading out of the town and the Roman extramural settlement was centred on this street. So we've travelled back across town, uh, down Church Street and up Moor Lane, back to our very own offices here in this complex of mills. Yes, aren't we lucky to, to work in a, a historic building like this? We followed the route of the Roman road out from the east gate of the fort uh, up the hill towards uh, the Quorma Tileries, which were in operation in the 2nd and 3rd centuries AD. And this was quite an industrial area altogether in that uh, we are just on the edge of the Lancaster Canal, which follows a contour round the outskirts of Lancaster and of course it provided a focus for a lot of industrial development and some of the earliest mills in Lancaster were built around here. We work in the historic Moorlanes Mills complex which was owned by the Storey family throughout the 19th century and up until fairly recently where they both spun and wove cotton into, into cloth. <laughs> 